रिकॉर्ड मेड फॉर सस्पेंशन ऑफ एम पीज एक्शन टेकन अगेंस्ट मोर देन वन फोर्टी एम पीज अर्लियर इन नाइनटीन एटी नाइन सिक्सटी थ्री एम पीज वर सस्पेंडेड बिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन लोकसभा द प्रीवियस थ्री लॉज विल बी रिपीट गवर्नमेंट विल हैव द राइट टू एलोकेट स्पेक्ट्रम India once again remains on top in terms of remittances. Migrants sent 125 billion dollars. World Bank gave information. New species of marine amphipod discovered. The name given is Demora chestia elenensis. The species belongs to the Cretaceous group. and the arctic experienced the maximum warmth in 2023 climate change became the reason revealed in noaa report around 141 mp's have been suspended during the uproar between the opposition and the opposition in the winter session of the parliament this is the biggest suspension ever in the history of the indian parliament earlier in the year 1989 63 MPs were suspended simultaneously. It is noteworthy that suspension of MPs in Parliament is done as per Parliament rules, in which suspension is done under different rules in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. In the Lok Sabha, suspension is done through Parliament rules number 373 and 374. The Speaker has the right to suspend. According to Rule 373, the Speaker can suspend members trying to disrupt the proceedings of the Lok Sabha. Under Rule 374 the speaker has the right to suspend a member who obstructs parliamentary work for the remaining session the rules relating to suspension in the case of Rajya Sabha are given in Rule 256 under this the chairman can suspend a member who obstructs the work of the house as soon as the suspension takes place the Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha member must leave the house with immediate effect Let us tell you that the case of suspension of MPs cannot be challenged in the court since this matter relates to the discipline of parliament it does not fall within the jurisdiction of the court Recently telecommunication bill 2023 was introduced in Lok Sabha telecommunication related activities will be regulated through this bill this will repeal many acts these include the Indian Telegraph Act 1885 Indian Wireless Telegraphy Act 1933 and Telegraph Wires Act 1950 It also amends TRI that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India Act 1997 In this bill rules related to the appointment of chairperson and members of the authority have been added Under this it is considered necessary to have at least 30 years of professional experience for the post of chairperson Along with this it is considered necessary to have at least 25 years of professional experience to serve as members according to the proposed bill spectrum will be allocated by auction except for certain specified uses where it will be allotted on administrative basis the central government will have exclusive rights in spectrum allocation in this the central government may repurpose or reassign any frequency range the central government will also have the right to allow sharing trading leasing and surrender of spectrum The bill provides for the crime and its punishment which includes offenses such as providing telecommunication services without authorization or gaining unauthorized access to telecommunications network or data for these crimes a provision of imprisonment up to 3 years or a fine up to rupees 2 crore or both has been made Recently the finance minister introduced the central goods and services tax Second Amendment Bill 2023 in the Lok Sabha it amends the Central Goods and Services Tax Act 2017 to align its provisions with the Tribunal Reform Act 2021 it makes the proposal for changes related to the eligibility criteria for members and president of the much awaited tribunals under the bill a provision has been made to facilitate the start of the administrative process for the operation of tribunals as soon as possible Let us tell you that the Central Goods and Services Tax Act provides for levy and collection of the central goods and services tax on interstate supply of goods and services. This act allows the central government to establish an appellate tribunal on the recommendation of the Goods and Services Tax Council. This tribunal consists of a president, a judicial member and two technical members. 
In this, the judicial member is required to be a high court judge or a district judge or additional district judge with service for at least 10 years. The bill allows advocates with at least 10 years of experience to be appointed as judicial members. Also, there should be adequate experience in matters related to indirect taxation. At the same time, the minimum age for appointment as a member or president of the tribunal should be 50 years. Apart from this, the bill also makes a provision to increase the age limit of the members of the tribunal, which will be 67 to 70 years for the president and 65 to 67 years for the members. For your information, let us tell you that GST Appellate Tribunal is a quasi-judicial body. It is proposed to be set up to resolve disputes related to goods and services tax in India. It will act as an independent body to hear appeals against orders passed by the appellate authority. It will consist of the national bench and several regional benches. It will be headed by a president appointed by the government. Recently, Advocates Amendment Bill 2023 was passed by Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Its purpose is to exclude touts from the legal system. This bill repeals the Legal Practitioners Act 1879, also amends the Advocate Act 1961. According to the past bill, every high court, district judge, session judge, district magistrate and revenue officer will have the right to prepare a list of touts and publish it. They can also order investigation into the conduct of suspicious persons. However, no person will be included in the category of touts without informing. The bill provides for punishment for being included in the list of touts. According to the bill, a person acting as a tout will be punished with imprisonment of up to three months, fine of up to rupees 500 or both. Let us tell you that the Advocates Act 1961 contains rules related to legal practitioners under which Bar Council and All India Bar were formed. Recently, Leeds, that is Logistics Ease Across Different States, 2023 report was released by Union Minister Piyush Goyal. In this, northeastern states of Assam, Sikkim, Tripura were named as achievers. Along with this, Union Territory, Chandigarh and Delhi were also given this honour. According to statistics, only five states contribute 70% to exports. This includes states like Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra and Telangana. In this report, states have been divided into several categories which includes Coastal Group, Landlocked Group, Northeast Group and Union Territory Group. In this Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu have got the achievers position in the Coastal Group category. Whereas in the landlocked group category, Haryana, Punjab, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh are on the achiever's spot. Let us tell you that LEED's report is issued by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. The report provides information on improvements in logistics performance at the state and union territory level. LEED's was launched in 2018 on the lines of the World Bank's Logistics Performance Index. This report is prepared based on many factors. It includes logistics infrastructure, logistics services and operating and regulatory environment. Recently, the World Bank has shared a survey related to LMICs, that is low and middle income countries. According to this, an increase of 3.8% has been recorded in the remittance flow in low and middle income countries in the year 2023. At the same time, India has secured the first position in the list of remittances recipients. According to the survey, India has received remittances of about $125 billion in the year 2023. After India, Mexico, China, Philippines and Egypt are included in this list. According to the World Bank, remittance flows to LMICs are estimated to have reached approximately $669 billion in 2023. At the same time, an increase of 7.2% rate has been seen in the remittance flow in South Asia. In contrast, flows into the Middle East and North Africa have declined significantly. In this, a decline of about 5.3% has been recorded mainly in the flow to Egypt. According to the survey, remittance inflow is estimated to grow at the rate of 3.1% in 2024. Weak global economic activities have been cited as the reason behind this. Apart from this, unstable oil prices and currency exchange rates are being held responsible. Let us tell you that remittance flows are money transfers that migrants send to their families and their home countries. It is an important source of income and foreign exchange for many developing countries. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the world's largest meditation centre, Swarved Mahamandir. 
It was inaugurated on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of Vihangam Yoga Institute which was established by Sadguru Shri Sadafal Devoji Maharaj. This temple is built in Umraha of Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. It is noteworthy that Swarveda Mahamandir is the world's largest meditation center where about 20,000 people can sit together and meditate. This great temple is a blend of ancient philosophy, spirituality and modern architecture. Its purpose is to enlighten mankind with its spiritual teachings and bring the world to a peaceful state. This great temple was named after Swarveda which is a spiritual scripture. It was written by Sadguru Shri Sadafal Deoji Maharaj. It is considered the founder of Vihangam Yoga and an eternal yogi. This great temple propagates Swarveda teachings. The Mahamandir is built of marble in a seven floor structure in which it has been designed with domes having 125 lotus petals. Integrate carving has been used in it in which there is decoration of pink sandstone around the walls of the great temple. An excellent garden with medicinal herbs has also been created on the premises. Shlokas of Swarveda are engraved on the walls of the great temple. Let us tell you that Vihangam Yoga is an Indian method of yoga and meditation. It was established in 1924 by Sadguru Sadafal Dev Ji Maharaj. It is made up of two words, Vihang which means bird and Yoga which means unification. The symbolic meaning of which is the idea of a bird which leaves the earth and flies freely in the sky. Its goal is to free our soul from the material world and identify the real truth naturally. These days, Delhi-based Army Hospital has become the center of discussion regarding bone marrow transplant. The reason for this is that for the first time in India, a child suffering from immunodeficiency disorder has received a successfully transplant. Actually, a seven-year-old child was treated in this army hospital who was suffering from a disease called ARPC-1B. It is noteworthy that ARPC-1B is very rare form of immunodeficiency. In this, the immune system of the patient gets seriously affected. Due to this, the patient has to face frequent life-threatening infections and other complications. Bone marrow transplant has emerged as a new ray of hope towards the treatment of rare primary immunodeficiency. This can be cured through BMT in time. Talking about BMT, bone marrow transplant, it is a complex medical procedure. In this process, damaged or destroyed stem cells are replaced with healthy bone marrow cells. It is noteworthy that bone marrow is a substance found between the bones. Stem cells are present in it. When the bone marrow stops functioning properly, its transplantation is required. Recently, a new species of marine amphipod has been discovered in Chilika Lake of Odisha. It has been named Dema orchestria alinensis. This species is a shrimp-like crustacean that belongs to the Dema orchestria genus. With this discovery, the number of global species in Dema orchestria genus has increased to six. It belongs to the Platorchestinae subfamily found along the Indian coast. It is white in color and its length is less than 15 millimeters. It has 13 pairs of legs which are capable of performing various tasks. Two to three hair-like structures are found on the front edge of the propodus of its nath pod, which identifies it from other similar species. Let us tell you that it has been named after Professor Alan Myers of University College Cork, Ireland, who have made significant contributions to the study of global marine amphipods. Let us tell you that amphipods are crustaceans found in the marine ecosystem. These are usually found in aquatic habitats. In these adult amphipods are about 20 mm long. These generally have head, a perion of 7 segments and a body with 6 segments. They look like prawns due to which they are called small prawns. Most of them are active swimmers. They play an important role in the marine food chain. They are food for many marine fish, invertebrates, penguins and shorebirds. Amphipods also serve as indicators of the impact of climate change and coastal ecosystems. Recently, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has notified several waste management rules for sound management of waste. These management rules have been notified under the Environment Protection Act 1986. These include Solid Waste Management Rules 2016, Plastic Waste Management Rules 2016, Biomedical Waste Management Rules 2016, Construction and Demolition Waste Management Rules 2016, Hazardous and Other Waste Rules 2016, and E-Waste Management Rules 2022 and Battery Waste Management 
Also, rules have been prepared for leaving environmental duty on hazardous waste, e-waste, and plastic based on extended producer responsibility principle. In fact, according to statistics, out of the total waste produced, that is about 1.5 lakh metric tons per day in urban areas, about 76 percent is processed. Under the Swachh Bharat Mission Urban, the solid waste processing capacity has increased by about 1.06 lakh tons per day in the last eight years. Let us tell you that the central government has started Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0 in the year 2021 with the aim of creating a garbage-free cities. It is being executed for five years. In this, the target has been set to make all urban local bodies at least three stars certified. For your information, let us tell you that the Environment Protection Act 1986 provides for the protection and improvement of the environment and matters related to it. Through this, the central government has the right to take important steps towards protecting and controlling the environment and reducing pollution. The government of India passed this act after the Bhopal gas tragedy. The main objective of this law was to implement the decisions taken at the United Nations Conference on Human Environment in 1972. which are related to the protection and improvements of the human environment and the threatened situations of animals plants and property article 48a of the indian constitution states that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to protect the forest and wildlife of the country further there is a provision in article 51a that every citizen of the country shall protect the environment Recently the World Health Organization has announced the inclusion of noma in the official list of neglected tropical diseases. This decision underlines the commitments of the World Health Organization towards the health services to the world's most vulnerable populations. Noma is considered one of the least recognized health challenges in the world. Let us tell you that noma is known as cankerum oris or gangrenous stomatitis. Noma is a rapidly progressive bacterial infection of the mouth and face. It mainly affects malnourished young children in high risk areas. Its cases are mainly found in sub-Saharan Africa. However, cases have also been reported in America and Asia, which includes children between the age of 2 to 6 years. It starts as inflammation of the gums, which if not treated quickly spreads rapidly and destroys facial tissues and bones. People affected by this have to face either death or severe disfigurement. Risk factors for noma include poor sanitation, malnutrition, weak immune system and extreme poverty its treatment includes antibiotics and disinfectant mouthwash in severe cases surgery may be necessary recently noaa that is national oceanic and atmospheric administration has released its 18th annual arctic report card the report card highlights the deep impact of extreme weather and climate events on the arctic Let us tell you that NOAA is a United States government agency that gives information about weather forecast, climate, oceans and coast. It also provides accurate and timely information about the exploration of outer surface. The report states that in the year 2023 the highest recorded heat has been in the Arctic. Due to the climate change an increase of almost 4 times has been recorded since 1979. It is noteworthy that the hot temperature of the sea is accelerating the thawing of permafrost due to which methane and carbon dioxide are being released. This process is contributing to global warming and ocean acidification. Due to this the population of Chinook and Chum salmon in western Alaska has declined significantly. The Mendenhall glacier in Alaska is dramatically melting due to rising temperatures over the past 20 years. For your information let us tell you that the arctic is a polar region located at the northernmost part of the earth land within the arctic region has varying snow and ice cover depending upon the season this includes the arctic ocean and adjacent seas and parts of alaska united states canada finland greenland denmark iceland norway russia and sweden after the news now let's take a look at five questions related to the bulletin Questions based on today's bulletin are first question is consider the following statements regarding primary immunodeficiency disorder one treatment of this disease is possible through bone marrow transplantation two this disorder affects the nervous system of the patient which of the above statements is or are correct only one only two both one and two or neither one nor two Next question is consider the following statements related to Dema orchestria elenensis. 1 it is a species of marine amphipod. 
टू इट बिलोंग्स टू डेमा और चेस्टिया जेनस थ्री इन इंडिया दिस स्पीशीज इज फाउंड ओनली इन द वेस्टर्न घाट हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट इज और आर करेक्ट ओनली वन ओनली टू ऑल थ्री और नन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग एनवायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स वन दिस एक्ट वॉज पास बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया आफ्टर द भोपाल गैस ट्रेजिडी टू द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लॉ वॉज टू इम्प्लीमेंट द डिसीजन टेकन एट द यूनाइटेड नेशन कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन द ह्यूमन एनवायरमेंट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी टू थ्री इट इज मैंशन इन आर्टिकल थर्टी एट ए ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट इज और आर करेक्ट ओनली वन ओनली टू ऑल थ्री और नन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग नोमा वन इट इज अ बैक्टीरियल डिजीज टू इट इज नोन एज कैंकरम ऑरिस और गैंगरेनियस स्टोमैटिटिस थ्री इट ग्रेटली अफेक्ट्स माल नरिश्ड चिल्ड्रन हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट्स इज और आर करेक्ट ओनली वन ओनली टू ऑल थ्री और नन लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग नेशनल ओशियानिक एंड एटमोस्फेरिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वन इट इज अ गवर्नमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ डेनमार्क टू इट प्रोवाइड इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट वेदर फोरकास्ट क्लाइमेट ओशन एंड कोस्ट थ्री इट इज ऑपरेटेड बाय द वर्ल्ड बैंक हाउ मेनी ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट इज और आर इन करेक्ट ओनली वन ओनली टू ऑल थ्री और नन रिसेंटली शेख हसल खान ऑफ केरला हैज कॉन्कर्ड एंटार्कटिकाज हाइएस्ट पीक माउंट विंसन The aim of this campaign is to spread awareness about climate change happening in Antarctica. Earlier apart from Mount Vinson, Sheikh Hasan Khan had also conquered four other highest peaks. This includes Mount Everest, Mount Denali of North America, Mount Kilimanjaro of South Africa, and Mount Elbrus of Europe. Let us tell you that Mount Vinson was surveyed for the first time by International Geophysical Year in the year 1957. It is named after US congressman Carl Vinson who led Antarctic research expeditions. This peak was first climbed in the year 1966 by an expedition led by Nicholas Clinch. Recently Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated Surat Diamond Bourse. It was inaugurated by the Prime Minister during his visit to Gujarat. According to the sources, this is the world's largest corporate office center. This is a trading center for rough and polished diamonds as well as jewelry. This diamond bourse is equipped with facilities like international banking, secure vault, jewelry mall. It is believed that with its launch around 1.5 lakh new jobs can be created. It is noteworthy that Surat Diamond Bourse is the world's largest and most modern center for international diamond and jewelry trading. It is built in about 6.7 million square feet. Let us tell you that Surat is famous for cutting and polishing diamonds. At the same time, Bombay has been a major trading center for exporters of Indian diamonds. Recently, the 29th Kolkata International Film Festival was concluded. This closing ceremony was organized in Rabindra Sadan. 219 films from 39 countries were screened in it. Awards were also distributed. In these awards, the Israeli film Children of Nobody directed by Ade Stadmor has won the best film award for innovation moving images meanwhile Carlos Daniel Malev has received the best director award whereas Anjan Dattas Chal Chitro Ekhon has received the special jury award apart from this the best film award among the director duo has been given to Sharmishtha Mehti and Rajdeep Paul A recent study has found the first evidence of yak domestication by humans. This evidence has been obtained from Banga, a town in Shannan province of Tibetan Autonomous Region in China. This study sheds light on the coexistence of domesticated yak and taurine cattle within Banga. This displays the sophisticated level of animal husbandry and agricultural system from 2500 years ago. In this researchers believed that taurine cattle probably reached central and eastern tibet from anatolia via the silk road there are an estimated 14 to 15 million domestic yaks in asia they are found in the indian himalayan border states recently daniel boren boem and ali abu awad have been jointly awarded the indira gandhi award 2023 This award has been given to him for their efforts to bring together the youth 
and people of Israel and Arab countries for a non-violent resolution of the Israel-Palestine conflict. It is noteworthy that Baron Boy is a distinguished classical pianist born in Argentina. At the same time, Awad is a distinguished Palestinian peace activist who is working for a peaceful resolution to the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. Let us tell you that this award is given in honor of former Prime Minister of India Indira Gandhi. This award has been given by the Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust every year since 1986. This award is given for extraordinary contribution in the field of international peace, disarmament and development. In this, an award of Rs 25 lakh is given along with a citation. Recently, a survey has revealed that there has been a decline of about 20 to 30 percent in the number of winter migratory birds in Sultanpur National Park. This national park is located in Gurugram district of Haryana. It was earlier known as Sultanpur Bird Sanctuary. It mainly includes wetlands. It is a major habitat for migratory birds as well as local birds and aquatic birds. It was notified as a Ramsar site in the year 2021. Tropical and dry deciduous types of vegetation are found here. It also includes seasonal aquatic vegetation. The park also has open grasslands dotted with artificial islands, which are important grounds for aquatic birds in winters. Recently, a study has been published in the Lancet Global Health regarding child marriage. According to this, in India, one out of five girls and one out of six boys get married in childhood. For this data, five years of National Family Health Survey was used. It was found that child marriage has declined in India. But in recent years, this practice has become more prevalent in some states and union territories. The study found that the prevalence of girl marriage declined from 49% in 1993 to 22% in 2021, whereas the prevalence of child marriage decreased from 7% in 2006 to 2% in 2021. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated Kashi Tamil Sangamam 2023. It is being organized in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. During this, the Prime Minister released multilingual and braille translations of Thirukkural, Manimikalai and other classic Tamil literature. Let us tell you that the purpose of this Sangamam is to celebrate the age-old relations between Tamil Nadu and Kashi. This is an initiative to take forward the spirit of Ek Bharat, Shreshth Bharat. The speech given by the Prime Minister was translated into Tamil for the audience using artificial intelligence in real time. Citing the example of two great temple cities, Kashi and Madurai, the Prime Minister said that Tamil literature is related to both Vagai and Gangai, that is Ganga. On this occasion, the need to know the culture of Tamil Nadu and Kashi was also emphasized. Recently, a new strain of COVID-19 JN.1 has been detected in India. It has been identified in Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. So far, 21 cases have been registered in Kerala, Maharashtra and Goa. The Central Ministry has suggested not to panic and remain alert. The JN.1 strain is believed to be a descendant of BA.2.86. It is commonly known as Pirola. Let us tell you that this new strain has been identified in India as well as in America and China. Its rapid transmissibility and cases of mild symptoms correspond to subtypes of Omicron. Recently, the World Bank has set up a task force for reform action plan of multilateral development banks. It is noteworthy that multilateral development bank is a report of an independent expert group. The report recommends a triple mandate to harness the potential of multilateral development banks. It aims to eliminate extreme poverty, boosting shared prosperity and contributing to global public goods. It has also been suggested to triple the permanent loan level by 2030 and create a third financing mechanism. Let us tell you that the World Bank was established in 1944 under the Bretton Woods Agreement. It has 189 member countries. India is also one of its member countries. Its headquarters is in Washington, D.C.